Welcome to another really f***ing exciting tutorial by Pixel Mosh Pit. I love these so much, in fact. We're going to work on watercolor today. And I know there's a previous video with the watercolor, but I've been getting a lot of questions on how to apply color to them. So we're going to do that today. I actually have two examples we're going to start with here. So you'll, you'll see, I actually have them grouped. Let me ungroup real fast. This is something I sketched out. I, I literally started with the lines. I have a tutorial that kind of shows custom typography. Um, this one's a little more on the sloppy side. I used a uh, brush from my um, uh, brush pack. Uh, it's a dry brush to kind of give it that, uh, you know, a paintbrush loaded with paint that's kind of dried out. And then the second one, this is a font, it's against, you can find it, I believe, on Behance, Creative Market, a couple of different places uh, where you can find fonts online, um, defont.com, I'm sure, but it's called against. These are going to be the actual shapes that we're going to use to kind of cut away from and cut out, um, you know, some of our color and texture and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy, and in a new layer, I'm going to paste that in. Let's go ahead and drag it over here. I'm going to go ahead and expand it and then merge. I'm going to expand again. I always like to do a double expand because sometimes you'll catch stuff that's just like there um, that doesn't fully expand and then hit another merge again. So I just keep that in mind. Always double expand just to you know, double check. You might have uh, you know paths that are lines versus brush strokes and stuff like that. So always you know do multiple expands. So now that we have that done what I'm going to do is create another new layer. I'm going to keep that love on a um, separate layer here. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that one. And what I'm going to do here now is just apply an, a, gra a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I want to select a color. Right now you can see a question mark where the fill is. I have it selected. It's not showing black. Uh, so you use the magic wand to get that. I'm going to uh, double click to bring up the options for the magic wand, set the tolerance, the fill tolerance to one, which means it's only going to find one color at a time. Uh, the tolerance, if you, at default, is 32, so any color within a specific range or hue, it's going to find increments of 20. So um, I almost think of it like a percentage, like 32% of a color it'll try to find. So you can see once I've selected that black, it shows up in the fill. I'm going to hit the um, uh, less than symbol and um, apply a gradient. You can see this has got some transparency. I was doing something prior to this, but let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and dump in some color uh, and create a kind of wacky rainbow colored kind of color stuff. I don't know, just something random, something that looks kind of watercolorish to me. Uh, let's see here, I'll dump this in. And you can always, you know, just kind of plug stuff in and change them as you go. Uh, let's get some yellow in here. I don't know if I like that. Let's get that. Let's put the yellow over here. Uh, yeah, let's dump the yellow in over here. Let's get some green. And then a nice lighter green. Some of these I did pick uh, beforehand. Looks pretty cool. You know what? I'm gonna put that over here. This over here. Scrunch them up. Let's get some of this kind of light pink stuff going on. Okay, I think I like that. So now I'm gonna hit G and go to my gradient tool, and you can see there's so many different shapes. So there's so many different gradients. I'm just gonna drag across it and uh, see what I get here. So all right, it's doesn't. It's not picking up all the blues and everything that I have in there so I'm going to do it again. You'll see now. Let's go ahead and shorten it up. Okay, now I think we've got some stuff in there. Okay, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I like that direction, so let's go ahead and switch that again. Gradient. And remember, just play around. Have fun with it. This looks like it might be a little more appealing. Eh, no. You know what? I'm going to go back to what we have. So, okay. So this already, you know, even with the dry brushes, kind of looks... You know, like a neat acrylic paint watercolor kind of thing going on. But we want to add some more of that to this. Uh, so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and apply, uh, make a mask to this. And then what I'm going to do is I have a, uh, a Wacom tablet, so, you know, that's going to help me here. But you can do this with a mouse just as 
easy. So I up here I have my symbol um, sprayer tool out with all the sub tools because I use it a lot and I just like to have them there so I can just kind of click them and go. Um, so now let me uh, I actually deselected my object. So with with the object selected, head into the mask, and with the mask selected, let's get our symbol sprayer and. Uh, in symbols, you're going to see, and this is the watercolor pack. Uh, this is the updated one. There's a lot more, you know, watercolor brushes, and I will be updating these over time, um, you know, for free for the people that have already purchased. But uh, so, anyways, let's let's go ahead and grab some one of the watercolors here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in, and you'll see automatically we're going to start to see stuff. I'm going to click over to the transparency panel, and you'll see this is the actual artwork itself, and then this is the mask, the opacity mask being applied to it. And you can see that we're painting in some of the stuff. Um, these symbols are set to different blend modes, which you can edit. You just make sure you're not inside an opacity mask, then double click the symbol. You can go in and edit it to your heart's content, tweak things all you want. Um, so anyways, I, I don't remember what the blend mode is on this one, but let's go ahead and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and shrink this stuff down. So I'm still within the symbol sprayer tool, and I'm using the um, uh, symbol sizer tool, sub tool, I mean. So I'm basically just clicking at the origin point for the symbol, um, holding down Alt, and then pressing. And you'll see, you're seeing that I'm, there, I'm shrinking them up, and then I can use my, uh, I, I think it's scruncher or shifter tool. Okay, so the shifter tool, I can kind of move this around. And you can see... You know, I'm leaving gaps and stuff like that. That's pretty cool for this. This is like the first layer that I'm uh, going to apply. So I'm going to, you know, deselect, click my symbol spare tool again, head into my symbols, find another one that I find appealing. Let's go with this one, number 11. Okay, head back. Our opacity mask is in there, and we're on it. So I'm going to brush this in. Okay, and these are really solids, and I'm not seeing too much difference with that. So what I'm going to do is use my symbol stainer tool, and we can kind of play around with this and see what we get. So I'm going to use a, a solid black, and uh, kind of like that. So I'm just basically, it's incrementally um, dropping black, and it gets darker and darker the more I click until you get to the darkest point. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotator, and I can change. You can see that with these arrows, I can change the direction of uh, how how it's moving and what direction it's facing. So, okay, I like that. That's pretty good. And then keep in mind, we can always just grab the entire thing and move it around until it looks kind of nice to us. I like that. I like how it kind of cuts off that. Now, also, you might think, oh, I've deselected. How do I what if how do I grab the object behind? Head over to your layers panel. It'll keep each symbol group together, so you can just kind of click off to the right and move them around if you want to do it a little bit more. So that's pretty cool. I like over here what we're kind of, you know, it looks like uh, the water color didn't get full coverage. So I like that. So um, that that's pretty much, I mean, if you want, you know, to be done super quick, this, this, this is done. You know, you went in, you used the um, opacity mask tactic to kind of knock out and bring out some sections. In this case, we're bringing it out because we're painting white into a completely black opacity mask. Um, so I'm going to add an extra little bit to this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'm going to go ahead and, in the duplicated layer, release the mask, click the mask, delete. It'll give me the original artwork, which is exactly what I want. Uh, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply or use my magic wand to select a color. Now I can see it active in, in my fill. Apply black to it. Now what I'm going to do out here is add an effect. Stylize. I'm going to do an inner glow. Uh, let's have a take. Let's take a look. And you'll see you can't see it all that great with the selection being made, but I'm going to hit OK. And this is just the default setting Illustrator has for the inner glow. So I'm going to choke that back a little bit. I think it's glowing a little too much. So if I head over to my um, appearance panel, I use my magic wand to select again. You'll see that I have the inner glow. I can click it again. Um, let's knock the blur down to 0.4. Hit preview, see what we get. Should choke it. I like that. We'll go with that. Now what we're going to do basically is 
uh, change the blending mode. So I'm, I'm going to change the blending mode to screen, which means it's only going to allow anything that's white to be visible. All the black's going to be gone. So you, with that in mind, let's go ahead and hit screen. I'm going to go to um, shortcut Control X to cut that out. I'm going to head back to the um, original one we were working with, click into the opacity mask, and then paste in place. You can go to edit, paste in place, or do the shortcut shift control V. We'll paste in place. Give it a second. And you'll see that now the edges, um, which were white, are now kind of uh, a little more visible, which uh, watercolor tends to have. Um, you know what, I'm actually going to duplicate it again. We'll just paste in place again. And it's actually, it should, you should see it get a little stronger around the edges. Yeah, it did. So I like that. And that's kind of what happens with watercolor, is that as the water, um, there's, there's tension towards the, the edge of the water, um, the pigment from, you know, the actual paint will pool towards the edges. So that's kind of what's kind of going on here. But we have that nice kind of texture. Um, now, this is pretty much done. This, this I'm super happy with. I don't hate it at all. I can remove the, um, you know, any stray layers that I don't need. And, you know, you can slap this on like a canvas texture background. Let's go ahead and do that, you know, for a word creating a little mock-up for a client or something like that. Let's uh, drop this here. And you can see, even with the black, you can see all the transparency that's going on that's been knocked out. But let's go ahead and hit white. And I'm going to go to effect. And we'll just head to the Photoshop effects. These are going to be raster. Let's go to the texture. Um, let's see. Let's do texturizer. And you can see that we have burlap. Let's go with canvas. Um... Scaling, we'll go about 64%. The relief is just the strength of the pores. Uh, I don't want too much. That's okay right there. Hit okay, and it will take a moment. And uh, you can see that it's applied it uh, to the white shape we've created. Now, you can see that with this uh, artwork here, it, it basically knocks out the texture the way you would texturize this is probably just hit a multiply and you should be able to see the texture now through um, the artwork that's what multiply does it does the opposite of screen um, screen keeps all the white and makes all the black invisible whereas multiply keeps all the black and the white becomes invisible so um, you know all these pinks and all these different colored hues have a value to them. That value is going to have black, some sort of shading to it, some, some tone. Um, so this is the, uh, the first method. So let's go ahead and head into the second method. Okay, so I've created a new layer. This is going to be the second method. It's kind of going to be a repeat of what we were doing in the previous one. Um, this time we're just using, you know, a font installed on our system. This one's against. You can find it online. Um, so what I'm going to do is obviously start with um, an expand, which you, you don't technically have to. Um, I just kind of want get, to get it out of the way so you guys can see the edging. Okay, so now that that is expanded, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to turn off that one for now. I'm going to grab a square. I'm going to turn it white. And then I'm going to grab the mesh tool. And I'm going to head to the center point and just start adding some mesh lines along the edges to give me some uh, columns. And then let's add some rows. And then basically what I'm going to do is just kind of color them to my heart's uh, content. I'm going to use these same kind of colors. Let's get this, maybe some here. Do these all like a light green as it fades into a dark green. Let's get some pink over here. And you can see this, even this mesh tool right here, it's already kind of looking like watercolor. Um, so let's get this into some yellow, like that. Uh, 
let's do, let's see here. Sorry, I got my updates going for Thunderbird email. Um, okay, so let's drop some dark blue in over here. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then the cool part is you can kind of push this stuff around with the mesh. So it, it will give it a little more of an organic look to it instead of something uh, like the gradient in the in the previous one. Um, you know, again, d depending on the angle with the gradient, it, it'll be a little more convincing because you can hide it through the texture. But, um, you know, if you want to do something a little more organic, you can do it this way. So uh, now this is done. We're going to use, um, use this later because basically we're going to kind of do the reverse. We're going to set up the mask that we're going to paste into this um, and then uh, you know kind of go in and add some extra stuff but um, I'm, I know I'm going to use another portion of this so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it twice now let's head over here and basically what I'm going to do here is make mask you know what let's go ahead and I'm going to delete that let's just keep the text to show you um, that you can edit this later but you, you, you may, you'll have to stretch a few elements, but um, you can kind of keep this editable. So let's go ahead and hit Make Mask. And then basically, same thing, head over to your Symbol Sprayer tool. Actually, before we do that, let's select that. Let's release. We haven't added anything, so there's nothing to delete after the release. Let's make this white. And I'm going to delete, or not delete, but turn off the background so you can see it's still there. Uh, let's add a black background real fast, just so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's select this, make mask. It's going to disappear because by default, opacity masks completely knock everything out. Um, you got to add the white to add it back in. So let's head over to our symbol sprayer tool. Let's head over to our symbols and just kind of pick one and knock it in. That's pretty good already. I'm going to use the sizer and shrink this down. So this is looking pretty cool. Dig it. Um, we can mess with the uh, blending mode if we want. I would suggest screen because you're in black and want to keep the whites. Let's deselect. Whoops, not paint another. Let's deselect by clicking out and head back into our symbols. Let's find another one. I am pretty fond of these up here. They're a little stronger in texture. Um, so you have some strong ones and some soft ones. Let's get our symbol sprayer. Let's kind of knock these in here. There's only two. Let's go ahead and size them down. I'm holding Alt. Uh, let's make that a little bigger. And knock it down a little bit more. And I can push it where I want it. Those nice crackles there. Let's mess with the blending mode. Uh, back to screen. Okay, let's paint it a little bit with our stainer. Uh, down here I have, uh, you know, the, the complete values, so from black all the way to white. So let's try gray, see what we get here. Uh, let's go a little darker. See what we get. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Let's try a, a little darker one here. Maybe here too. Yeah, I like that. So, okay. Now, let's head back. I'm going to deselect. You can control shift A. We'll deselect as well. Uh, let's head down some, to some of the salt. And salt is used in, in watercolor to, um, it'll basically reject the pigment and the water around it. So it'll, it'll push pigment around. So let's go ahead and sprinkle some of that in. I'm going to size it down. Set the blending mode to multiply. Let's see here. Deselect again. Back to our symbol. I'm going to get some of this smaller stuff here. Spray. Let's go another little bit bigger here. Let's hit these to multiply. And we'll stain them full black. Okay, so there's some nice texture there. So I'm pretty much done with this, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the opacity mask, head to the transparency panel. If it's not there, just click where the object was. Uh, we're going to click back out. You know what? I think I was adding that to, let's see, I hope not. I sure was. 
I was actually adding those to the outside. Let me grab all those symbols. I'm going to cut them. And it's good for you guys to see me mess up, so, you know, if you run into these problems in the future. Um, actually, let me head back out and turn the back, that black background on so we can see what we're doing. Select the object, head back into the opacity mask, control shift V to paste in place what I just cut, which was all that, uh, whoops, all the salt. So there's some salt symbols here, salt symbols here, and we can just kind of move them around if we want. Whoops. Start here. I'm just using the dir direction pad on my keyboard to do that. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm done. So click out of the opacity mask, and I'm going to turn off the black background. You'll see, oh wow, it disappeared. It actually didn't. Let me turn the background off. You'll see. It's very faint. I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's some white there. So, um, And that's live text. That's, so, you know, you can edit this later, but again, keep in mind, you're probably going to have to edit the mask a little bit, paint more stuff in. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Head back over. Control Shift D to turn my background back on. So in this first one here, I'm going to click on, I'm going to hit Make Mask, and then Control Shift V to paste in what I just worked on. And you can see I can move this around. Once I move out of the space of the uh, of the artwork, you'll see it fades out. But I can move this around to find the color that I want. And keep in mind we did we use the mesh, and it keeps it really really organic looking. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and exit out right here. Actually, before I do that, I'm sorry. Head back in. Control Copy. Whoops, not cut. Just paste it in place. But Control C to copy. That way we have a copy of where that location is. Okay. Let's see here. And we're going to Control Shift V in a new layer. So now we have that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and release the mask because I don't need it anymore. I just want that location. So, whoops. That's, that's the font. I'm going to actually grab that, cut it, select everything else, delete, and then paste it back in. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make this black. We're going to hit uh, an inner glow with stylize. Inner glow. It's going to keep the default from what we last used. You can hit preview if you want. We'll hit OK. You know what? Let's bump the opacity up to 100% on this one. And then hit OK. Let's cut this. Now, you can use symbols again to with this editable text for an all to update on the fly. I'll get into that in a, a later video, but for now, let's uh, just keep moving. So, let's make a mask here, do the same thing, paste in, place, and you'll see we get that nice edge that's going to create some really pretty watercolor stuff there. So that's the two techniques. Um, keep in mind, those brushes are available, uh, the watercolor stuff, in the Pixel Mosh Pit store. Every purchase is greatly appreciated. I really hope you guys took something from this today um, in combined with the previous tutorial. Um, you know, the like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to zoom in. Right now these are gray. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the...